Hey guys, this is Stinger from the Ghost Squadron Airsoft team, and today I'm going to be talking about AEG electrical connectors. Because an AEG is powered by electricity, you need to have a way of connecting the motor to the power source, which is the battery. This is done with wires, and to make the wires quickly detachable, connectors are used, such as these. This allows the battery to easily be plugged into the gun, and then removed later. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the two main types of connectors, ultra plugs and Tamiya connectors, and I'm going to be showing you how to install Dean's connectors and also why I think you should be installing them over the standard Tamiya connectors. Now the Tamiya connectors are the form that most people are used to seeing, uh, pretty much everybody recognizes them but not everybody knows what they're named. They're called Tamiya connectors because of the brand name Tamiya, that's the most popular brand for making these connectors. And like many other parts of the AEG, it got started in the radio control world with radio control cars and airplanes. Now, most people know about the Tamiya connector because it comes stock on pretty much every gun. Uh, Tamiya connectors come in two different form factors. There's the large type, which I have here for size comparison, and the more commonly seen small type. They also come in all colors. You can see I've got a pretty translucent greenish colored one right here, an opaque black one right here, and then a semi-translucent white. Personally, I think that they look extremely ugly, especially in comparison with the Dean's connectors, but not everybody cares about things like that. There are other characteristics of the Tamiya connector that make it not really the best choice. First, it's considerably longer than the Dean's connector, and this makes it difficult to install in a smaller space, for example like a buffer tube where you really don't have a lot of room for a bulky connector such as this. Even if it's a small type, it's still quite a bit longer. Tamiya connectors also use a different type of method of attaching the wires to the connectors themselves. In Tamiya connectors, the uh, wires are crimped onto a bullet connector which is then inserted into this little boxy frame that you see right here. This connection system is not quite as secure. You'll see commonly that the wires will become detached and you'll have to push them back in and generally I don't see that as a very reliable connection. Also many people do not have the tool necessary for crimping the bullet connector onto the wires and for that reason these can be a little bit more difficult to install for some in the aftermarket. The bullet connectors also have a relatively small surface area uh, for electrical transfer and what this means is that they have a higher resistance therefore they are less efficient and they make more heat. Now Tamiya connectors do have one advantage and that is that because they're not soldered on they're able to bend all the way up to the connector itself without cracking unlike another connector that is soldered where the solder can kind of run up the wire a bit and make it brittle so that when it bends right there it cracks and breaks. Other than that, and maybe for some, the latch that it has on top, it really has no other beneficial parts to it uh, over the Ultra Plug. Now, the Ultra Plug, more commonly known by the brand name Deans, is a much smaller, generally red colored connector that uses a T shaped set of two prongs, which connect very securely despite having no latch. Dean's connectors often come with a gold coating on the connection tabs, which offers better electrical conduction, uh, therefore decreasing electrical resistance. The smaller form factor allows them to fit into smaller spaces much easier, and the lack of a latch makes it very easy to plug and unplug them, but they are still very secure and won't come out accidentally in your gun. The surface area that they offer for electrical transfer is much higher and they have much less electrical resistance. So by switching over to Dean's connectors, you can gain actually a slight amount of performance. I was pretty surprised. The way the ultra plugs are typically connected to wires is through a method called soldering where liquid metal is actually used to attach the wires directly. This is a very secure connection method, but it can be slightly brittle at the connection point, which we will talk about later as I'll show you guys a way to reinforce that and prevent it from breaking during use. Because of the numerous advantages that ultra plugs have over the standard Tamiya connectors, I recommend to anybody that you upgrade. Not only does it look better, it's smaller, easier to use, and 
can definitely give you a little bit extra performance. It has been requested several times that I make a video on how to wire in ultra plug connectors. So that is going to be the last part of this video. I'm going to show you how to solder on these Dean's connectors right here. This is an old Crossman Pulse R76 and I'm going to be stealing the wires from it so that I can make a Dean's to Tamiya adapter. So what I'm going to have to do is cut it down here. But for most of you that want to rewire your guns, you're obviously going to cut the corresponding parts up here. Really all you have to do is cut it off like I've done for these other connectors with some wire cutters. It's just a simple snip like that. If you're rewiring a battery, there's some things to keep in mind. First, you want to ensure that only one side of the wires is cut at once and exposed to the air, because if they touch, you'll have a short circuit and that can damage the batteries quite a bit. And with a LiPo, that can also mean that it could explode or start a fire. So only cut one side at once, cut it, solder in like I'm about to show you, then cut the other one and then solder that side in. Also keep in mind that the battery should always be the female side. Just for reference, here's a female connector. You can see the male connector right here plugs into it like that. The reason this is done is because if you had a male connector here, all it would take to short circuit it is for a piece of metal to go like this and touch it, or for something else that conducts electricity to connect the gap right there. That would short circuit the battery, it would cause it to overheat and damage itself, and like I said, with a LiPo, that can cause a fire or an explosion. So with your gun, you can expose both wires at the same time. You don't have to worry about creating a short circuit because there is no power being applied to it at the time. It should be obvious you shouldn't have a battery connected to it while you're doing this. So just imagine that this part down here is actually the gun and out here is where the connector for the gun was. I know it might be difficult to visualize, but just imagine that these wires go to the motor and to the gearbox and that there is no connector here. And these wires are where the battery is going to plug into. Like that except with ultra plugs. Now make sure that your connecting wires are the same length. So I'm going to have to trim that one down a bit right there. Next, you're going to need some wire strippers so that you can strip the insulation off of the wires just at the end. Like that. And same for the other side. Remember if you're doing this on a battery, you're going to do all of one side in one single step and then do the other side all in one step. It really doesn't matter how much insulation you take off and you can see I kind of took off a little bit too much. It only has to go the length of this little tab on the end. So for the connectors, the short tabs are where the wires are connected like that. If you cut a little bit too much, you can either trim that or you can kind of fold it over like that. The next step is to solder these to the connector. For that, you're going to need a soldering iron. This one is fairly powerful. You want a very hot one, or you really you want as hot as you can possibly get uh, for a soldering iron, because the hotter it is, the easier the process will be. There is something that you have to keep in mind when you're soldering to a battery. You do not want the soldering iron to be in contact with the wires for too long, as the heat can be conducted up the wires and into the cells of the battery, which, like I mentioned before, can cause some problems, especially with a LiPo, which can catch fire or explode. I recommend that you use a vise to hold the connector because your hands will probably be pretty busy while you're soldering it in. Additionally, you can use some other things to hold up the wires while you're working to free up your hands even more. Something to keep in mind with ultra plugs is that the horizontal connector this top one right here is always positive. Make sure that you line that up with the red wire, which is also what denotes it being positive. Now, once we get it connected, we need a way to cover up this exposed metal right here. 
because if it touches a part of the gun, it could potentially short circuit it. For that, I would recommend that you use heat shrink tubing, which is a type of tubing, uh, generally like a rubber or plastic compound such as this, that once a certain amount of heat is applied to it, it shrinks up. So make sure that you put that on before you solder it to the connector, otherwise you're going to have to cut the connector off to put it on. Make sure that the exposed wiring is flush against the little tab on the connector. Uh, you want that to be touching as close as possible because that metal right there conducts electricity much better than the solder that we're going to be using. So you want the electricity to travel through the exposed wiring here and into that tab rather than through the exposed wiring into the solder and then into the connector tab. You want to make sure that the end of your soldering iron is clean before you start using it. If it's not, you can take a paper towel, uh, put some water on it, and then wipe it off a little bit. Keep in mind that this gets very hot at the end, and through the process, I would highly recommend that you wear some eye protection, just because molten metal, which is what we're working with here, can flick off and would not want to get that into your eye. Heat the soldering iron up until it's hot enough to easily melt the metal and then I would recommend that you cut off just a small piece of it that way you're not using you know an entire bundle in your hand or something like that now remember we're working with stuff that is very hot so you have to be careful the method that I use is to directly heat the connector tab which then will carry the heat up to the exposed wiring and that is where I will have the soldering material right here and once that heat melts this it just flows in between all the little strands of the exposed wiring and once it's flowed sufficiently I just pull it out and it cools and solidifies. I'm going to use this heat gun to shrink the heat shrink tubing. As you can see, the heat shrink tubing completely covers the exposed metal there, or the metal that was exposed there, and offers very good insulation. The connection is also very solid. For the other side, it's pretty much the same thing. Just make sure that you get the heat shrink tubing on before you start soldering it. And make sure that the exposed wiring is flush up against the tab from the connector. I now have the other side done and I have some heat shrink tubing over it. You can see I used a little bit of a larger heat shrink tubing diameter uh, and that was just to show you guys that you do not need to use a heat shrink that is the diameter of the wires that you use. It only has to be uh, large enough or small enough to go over the uh, connector tab there. The rest of it uh, does not need to be totally flush because what we're going to be doing is binding these two wires together. This is not only to further seal that connection of the heat shrink tubing down there, but it is also, more importantly, to connect these wires so that any force, uh, if it flexes or gets stretched, uh, any of that force is distributed out and uh, will not crack the solder joints that we have just made. You can go about doing this two ways. Uh, the easiest is to use some electrical tape 
and just tape around that right there several times and that generally makes a pretty secure connection but you can also use some other heat shrink tubing and put it up there as well and that creates a very nice seal. I've used both methods before. Uh, today because most people are going to have electrical tape I'll show you the easiest way to do it with electrical tape. It's fairly straightforward. You generally want to do it at the point where the heat shrink tubing stops and the wire insulation starts so you can kind of seal that uh, space off right there. So I'm going to wrap it around just a couple of times like that and then I'm just gonna cut it. So now the electrical tape is on. You can see if I tried to flex it or stretch it that all occurs where the electrical tape is. This is mainly because the heat shrink tubing I used adds a little bit of rigidity and that is very nice to prevent it from flexing and breaking up there where the solder makes it brittle. Of course the electrical tape does not have as clean of a look as having more heat shrink tubing there but it gets the job done just fine. So hopefully now you guys know why you should be using ultra plugs and how to attach them. I'd like to see more of these out on the airsoft fields because they're better in pretty much every way. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you guys later.